Hello again everyone, I'm Jim. Welcome back to another video. Carrying on uh, along the server line of things, uh, another new little server just dropped in uh, that I'm going to be putting to some use in my own lab. So it's time to show you what actually makes a very good uh, little entry level server if you want to get started with, uh, I suppose, rack mounted servers. Uh, this is the little Dell R230 makes a great little entry level server due to the fact that it's small. It uh, doesn't use much power. Uh, it's got a reasonable scope for upgradability and they're quite cheap to come by. So, uh... and here it is sat on top of its slightly older, but bigger cousin. This is an R230. This one underneath here is an R620, but uh, I'll show you why it sat on top of it in a second. This R230 is the two bay model. It has two three and a half inch bays, non hot swap bays in this particular chassis, but it was optionable with four non hot swap bays or four hot swappable bays, of which you can fit three and a half inch hard disks or with adapters two and a half inch drives in there. Uh, this particular one has the Xeon E3 1220 4 core CPU. They supported. Uh, all the E3, 1200, V5, and V6 series CPUs. Uh, the Core i3, I think 6100, was an option on these, and certain Pentium and Celeron Intel CPUs fit in these. Uh, you can fit 64 gig of RAM in this, should you need it. But the main reason why this is an ideal starter system is, number one, it is quiet. Number two, it is cheap to buy. Number three, it is cheap to run. So let's have a quick look. This is just sat here. I have made sure everything is up to date on it. And currently with it sat doing absolutely diddly squat not being on, the baseboard on here uses six watts. That is it. So you can leave this server plugged in and it will just sit and use six watts. Now, here we are with the lid off, starting obviously at the front. You can see we've got the two three and a half inch. These are non hot swap bays, which means if we go back a bit further, you have the little clip you have to push in, and then that pushes the hard disk caddy out. You can obviously put in a hard disk, or I would recommend filling it with SSDs. Um, obviously, if you can find the model with the Four bays, even better, more space for hard disks. Um, we've got front panel connectors, obviously a pair of USB ports on the front and a VGA port. Obviously Dell still keeping with the VGA ports, unlike other some other vendors who are switching to display ports on certain models. Looking at you, Lenovo. Uh, moving, obviously we've got the connectors. There's no hard disks in here at the moment. Obviously when you buy these things, as a rule, generally they'll come without hard disks unless you've spec'd otherwise. Uh, we've got three non hot swappable fans. Um, on the four bay model, I think you do get the additional fan instead of a blank in there. Um, moving further on in, uh, you can see we've got obviously standard connectors, we've got front panel connector motherboard, we've got the fan connectors, we've got the uh, SATA connector tucked in there with another power riser. Um, CPU, as I said previously, it supports all E3 1200 series V5 and V6 CPUs, and it supports 64 gig of DDR4 RAM. Um, this one actually has the optional iDRAC module in the back as well to go with the VGA port on the back. We've got tucked in down there a pair of gigabit Broadcom network cards, and we've got a PCI times 16 and a PCI times 8 slot tucked in there. But if you are thinking of using this for doing anything heavy with GPU, the limit will always be we have a 250 watt power supply. That's what they'll fit into here. That's what spec to fit into here. So if your GPU can't run off of a PCI 16 slot on its own, so you are looking at basically Nvidia Quadro sort of T1000 series, something like that will run in there okay but not much more. It's not designed for any heavy GPU loads, but these make a great starting machine. If you want to get involved in enterprise servers, but don't have a particularly huge budget, don't have a huge demand for resources, and don't need a lot of power being used, especially with the cost of power nowadays. Now, 
you can see obviously we've got lights flashing and the light flashing at the back there um something that most if not all enterprise servers do have is a baseboard management controller this is no exception um this is a power edge this is a proper server even though it's quite small it's not a workstation motherboard shoved in a server case this is built to run 24 7 365 for a business and as such needs to behave like that so just so you're aware when you're dealing with any server it doesn't matter whether it's powered on or off it will use a bit of power um, this server let's just check there we go so when it's off just the baseboard management on this server uses six watt, which isn't a great deal, but something to be aware of. Obviously, again, we've got 250 watt power supply, so it's never going to use more than 250 watts, but we'll do a test on that later to see what this server uses under a, just a full load, for example, um, and then on idle, see what it sits and idles at if you want to have something like this running. Um, as I alluded to earlier, the reason it's sat on top of the R620. This is a full length server. This is a short server. So as you can see, as we move back, the server stops there, whereas the R620 underneath carries on a lot further. This means as well that obviously you can fit these servers into much smaller racks. You don't have to take up as much room. And generally, because there's not as much fans, they don't get as loud. One thing to be aware of with any server when you start putting cards in the back they get louder this server is no exception i've tested this already just to make sure it works as soon as you start putting cards in the back the fans ramp up because they've got to push more air through so this has a e3 1220 v5 in at the moment which is a four core four thread cpu i might try and get a 1245 which is a four core eight thread cpu but for what I'm going to use it for, it doesn't need it. And generally, if you are looking at getting into this, the most common thing people want to do is run a few VMs up. And if you can find a 1245 in one of these or a 1220, generally it will be fine. And obviously, if you jump from a V5 to a V6, tiny bit more power efficient, tiny bit more performance. But that's where we are with these. So let me get this thing fired up and running Windows. And we can see how much power it uses just sat at idle. And then obviously we'll put some load on it and see how much these things burn when they're in use. Now we're up and running with uh, server 2022 standard running on this. Apologies that I don't have a VGA capture device. So I'm having to film the screen on this one at the moment. Uh, but you can see we've got a nice Xeon E3 1220v5, as I said earlier, four cores and 16 gig of RAM and a pair of gigabit NICs. Nothing particularly special, but again, this is looking at getting you started down the line uh, of potentially uh, getting involved in enterprise grade servers for quite a low budget. I mean, this server I picked up off of eBay in its current condition for 150 British pounds. So that's about 180 odd dollars, maybe a bit less than that. Um, and you can get them cheaper than that um, in various states. But one of the key aspects of this little thing is about being a cost effective way to get into the enterprise server home lab side of things and also how little power it uses. So I'm gonna pick you up now and we shall, shall, shall show you exactly how much power we're using on idle. 25 watts, and it drops down lower than that, especially when it's not up to much. So let's get you back in line here. And what we're gonna do is fire up some load. So good old Cinebench and I haven't run this yet, so I don't know what score we're going to get. Um, but the E3 Xeon in here is about equivalent to a Core i5-ish CPU, 6th or 7th gen, because that's the generation it is. So let's hit the magic start button, and hopefully we'll be able to capture the volume of this server as it ramps itself up to cool itself down, which they do get a bit loud being a 1U server, but this one's not bad. And obviously we'll see how much power it draws when it's doing its full render. So up and round we go. 
and flat out this server is using there you go 52 watts now obviously if you had a four core eight thread cpu in here that would probably go up to about 60 watts i don't have one of them unfortunately let's just let that run that's going to run on through we'll see if we can get the uh, server to ramp its fans up And there we go. That is obviously a score of 3037, which, yes, it puts it down quite low. Purely and simply because this is only a four core CPU. So we're down below even a, oh, there we go. There's an 11th gen Core i7. That's a mobile CPU, I believe. Um, which is four core eight thread at 1.69 base clock. This obviously peaks at two gigahertz. But... We've been running flat out now for that test took nearly five minutes to run and the server hasn't ramped the fans up at all. It's nice. It's quiet. Uh, these will sit and behave themselves. Now, I've tested this server with Windows, with ESXi. As far as I'm aware, there should be no problem with running uh, XCPNG, Unraid, uh, Proxmox on here, depending on what you fancy. but these are a great way to get involved and started with basically enterprise servers. They're low powered, they're quiet, they sit and they behave themselves and they're designed to, should you require it, be on 24 7, 365 and they won't break a sweat. And you can get all the firmware, all the updates. This one is fully up to date. Uh, the last patches for this one came out late last year, so it's still receiving a certain amount of updates from Dell. Um, what they are not, however, is designed to be running large things. You can run TrueNAS on here if you really want. Um, you could run Proxmox and put a Plex server inside it if you truly want, but I would not recommend it. These make great learning platforms for things like Active Directory, or if you want to spin up some virtual firewalls to play with, things like that. Just small, lightweight services, um, because the ultimate limitation is the amount of hard disks you can put in there and the amount of memory that you can squeeze in cpu is a limit but again if you're in a lab environment you can stack up the um, physical to virtual core ratio quite nicely it's not the end of the world but there we go so yes they make great little starter servers they're cheap enough they're power efficient um, and they're a great way to get involved so another way thing to uh, just keep an eye out for if you're after a server bit of patience they come around these are all starting to put, be pulled out of businesses now because they're getting to be a bit old in terms of business use the r240 has been around for a while now the r250 is out which is it's obviously the modern day replacement so yes don't jump on the first one have a bit of patience well thank you for joining me i hope this has proved uh somewhat useful if you're looking at getting involved in enterprise stuff as ever any questions uh comments whatever feel free to stick them down below i will do my best to answer what i can where i can and i'm sure other people will as well um and hopefully be bringing you some of the other servers we've got a nice empty rack below me to build and be focusing on a bit more on the sophos xg side of things to give you a um, next gen enterprise grade firewall that is free to use for your home lab and uh gives you pretty much everything you could need in a next gen firewall so there we go um always appreciate the likes the subscribes as ever the comments and uh, hope to catch you in the next one